Hello, this video is going to be a little different than the short summaries that are usually done. This is a supplement in addition to the 2011 Super Outbreak video. This is not this does not mean that you need to watch the 2011 Super Outbreak video in order to watch this one, although if you want to, go right ahead. This is by the title and hopefully the thumbnail, unless I learn Photoshop really quick, which I won't, as you can tell, is going to be taking a closer look at all four EF5s from the 2011 Super Outbreak. But before we do that, we're going to take a quick look at the meteorological conditions. This is specifically going to be looking over April 27th. This day in 2011, the NWS SCP would issue a 45% tornado chance that was hatched. Hatched means just a bunch of little uh, small lines and is an indication of EF2 plus tornadoes are more likely than regular tornadoes, I guess I should say. This is, I think, the highest hatched tornado chance that the NWS SCP has ever issued. The low on April 27th maxed, maxed out at 995 millibars, or I guess minimized out at 995. And the strough was absolutely negatively tilted. Negatively tilted is something that you don't need to completely wrap your head around. It just means that it is more likely for severe weather to form. It just causes a bunch of things. On top of this, storm relative helicity, something that again you do not need to completely understand, or SRH, or just simply the amount of rotation that is possible in a way that's not accurate but still, was at a recorded maximum of 500 meters squared per second squared. Why it can't be just meters per second, I have no idea. CAPE, which is always a thing that is talked about, convective available potential energy, reached 2,500 to 3,000 joules per kilogram. 1,500 is considered adequate, and we have twice that, and 4,000 joules per kilogram is considered extreme. And we are definitely close to that extreme range. April 27th, 2011 is the only day to have EF5s during the 2011 super, super outbreak, which ran for three whole days. We first start our tornado list with the north, with the north of Philadelphia to, to southeast of Missoulaville, Mississippi tornado. This is the Philadelphia EF5. This is the first of four that would happen on this day. This tornado had maximum winds estimated to be 205 miles per hour or 330 kilometers per hour. This tornado traversed 45 and a half kilometers and maxed out at 820 meters wide. This tornado would cause $1.1 million in damage, injure eight and three lost their lives. This tornado also achieved a pretty damn long ground time of 30 minutes. The average is much, much less than this. The very beginning of this cell first formed at 1300. This cell was only just starting to develop and there was no rotation. Just 25 minutes later, this storm was a severe thunderstorm warned. At, at 1336, it was tornado warned as a hook echo was seen on radar. An hour later, at 1436, a tornado emergency was issued. Just two minutes later, in the timeline of this tornado, EF5 damage was occurring. That emergency could not have come at a better time. Large trees were completely uprooted, as is seen in the foreground uh, do, don't don't worry about the massive ground scouring. You know that that that's not a big deal. We're 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 looking at this big healthy tree that was plucked from the ground. Scratch that. This ground scouring is absolutely insane and some of the worst that I've ever seen. Looking at photos of tornadoes. A Kemper County Mart 
which measured 280 square meters. This is not, this uh, slabbed brick home is not that marked, was damaged beyond repair. However, this brick home was also damaged beyond repair, as you can see. It's not there anymore. That is indicative of at least EF4 damage. This is Mississippi's first EF5 since 1966. I believe that was the Candlestick Park tornado. Our next tornado occurred from west southwest of Hamilton, Alabama to northeast of Huntland, Tennessee. This is the Hackleberg Phil Campbell tornado. This tornado is the most intense of the whole outbreak at winds 210 miles per hour or 340 kilometers per hour. This tornado had an extremely long track of 212 kilometers and maxed out at two kilometers wide. This tornado would cause $1.29 billion in damage, injuring 145 and causing 72 fatalities. At the time, that was the deadliest tornado since Udall, Kansas of, of I believe, 1952. Just a month later, the Joplin EF5 would surpass this as the deadliest tornado in United States history specifically. This tornado was incredibly consistent, being on the ground for two and a half hours, but also maintaining its strength for most of its life at around EF4 strength with large swaths of EF5 damage. To prove this, this these walls right here, which are no longer in existence, were poured concrete walls. Those have been sheared at their base. It's weird to think that this tornado, the most intense of the outbreak, was originally rated the F3. Hackleberg and Oak Grove, Oak Grove at 341, were completely annihilated. 75% of the town of Hackleberg was gone. That is absolutely insane. Phil Campbell was also hit extremely hard, with some foundation slabs of homes in Phil Campbell being destroyed. That is absolutely a very rare thing to happen. One of the only other tornadoes that I know that have done that is the Gwynn, Alabama uh, F5 from the 74 Super. On top of this, this tornado would shear massive amounts of asphalt, as seen in this photo, to the left of the track path. A concrete shelter's roof was torn off, that roof being made of concrete as well. And some concrete power poles were also snapped at their base. I highly recommend that you watch Tornado Archive's video on this tornado. That his video is around 50 minutes long, but definitely worth it in my opinion. Goes into much further depth than I can. Our next tornado is the southwest of Smithville, Mississippi, to east northeast of Hodges, Alabama. This is the Smithville EF5. Purportedly a very rapid intensifier, this tornado had an estimated top speed winds of 205 miles per hour, or 330 kilometers per hour. With a pretty darn impressive path length of 60 kilometers, this tornado would peak out in width at 1.21 kilometers. This tornado would cause $14.4 million in damage, injuring 137 and killing 23. This tornado was on the ground for 41 minutes. This tornado managed to completely trench the earth with some extreme ground scouring. However, unfortunately, I could not find pictures of that. I apologize about that. Homes were completely swept away, reduced to atoms. Cinder blocks were completely demolished as well. Just wind is doing this. On top of all of this, tar and chip pavements were completely scoured. A manhole, along with the ring around it, were ripped off of pavement. 
This is indicative of at least 200 mile per hour winds. This is also something that Joplin did, however it did not remove the ring. A hydrant was torn out of presumably a sidewalk with five feet of pipe along with it and thrown. A waste pipe was unearthed and dislodged. Shotsville was also hit at EF3 strength. In this bottom left-hand corner, we have a pile of tin meta. Oh, wait, no, that's a car. That's a car. But uh, you, you, you see this water tower down here. This car bounced off of that water tower. That is a fourth mile away. I don't think anyone can drive that car anymore. Our last day of five here is the Lakeview, Alabama to Rising Fawn, Georgia tornado. Reportedly being highly multi-vortex, the picture that I have is not truly showing that, but we do definitely see some intense vorticity noodles. With winds of above 200 miles per hour or 320 kilometers per hour, this tornado was on the ground for 36 minutes. This tornado would traverse 59 kilometers and achieve its widest point at 1.21 kilometers wide. There is at least $150,000 in damage done, with an unknown amount of people injured. We do know that 25 people died. Fife, I believe in Alabama, was hit at around EF3 strength, and the tornado intensified rapidly in strength and in size almost immediately after. In Rainsville, a stone home was completely obliterated, as well as other homes as well. A concrete support column from this stone home was ripped off of its foundation, taking the part of foundation that it was attached to along with it. One home's concrete anchors were wrenched from the ground, and its concrete porch was torn off and ripped to pieces. Another home's would be split in twain. An underground shelter was uncovered and according to the people in it, reportedly heaves upwards ever so slightly. It was not completely ripped from the ground though. On top of this, the pavement was completely scoured. I could not find a picture of the pavement scouring though. This cell would later go on to produce the Ringo EF4. which happens to be one of our four runner-up EF4s that achieved maximum winds of 190 miles per hour. Just wanted to really quickly talk about the 190 mile per hour EF4s here. Out of 11, four achieves this. There is Arab Alabama, Arab being circled in pink along this path right here. Pisgah Alabama, which I mistakenly wrote Pisgah Alaska, with abbreviation AK, in the 2011 Super video. I apologize for that. The Tuscaloosa Birmingham EF4, probably the most well-known EF4 from this outbreak. And the Ringo Georgia EF4, the one I just mentioned. On average in the United States, there is an, again, an average of one F5, or in this case now EF5, every year. When you average it out and split it amongst from, I believe, 1950 to now. This is obviously not the case because this system would produce four EF5s within 24 hours. If this does not sh give a hint as, the con as the, to just how ripe the conditions were for this outbreak, then I do not know what does other than the meteorological conditions that I went over. <laughs> that is all that I have, though, for this supplement to the 2011 Super. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope to see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching.